Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and today we get to look at this really great top of the keyway pry bar tension tool set. This is the Multipick Elite top of the keyway pry bar set, and you know what? I, I've had this for a while, and I've just been waiting for the opportunity to show this off. Um, I mean, Multipick just do a really great job, not only making high quality tools that are finished to a really high standard, but they also package everything so nicely. These come in a really nice full length multi-pick pick case made out of leather. Um, and you could use this one to not only hold these tension tools in, but add any picks you like to them, make an extra carry set. It's just so, so nice. Um, but enough about the case, albeit a very nice case, let's concentrate on these top of the keyway pry bars. Now, let's not make the assumption that everybody knows what top of the keyway means or what a pry bar is. So let's grab some generic lock, here is one. And when we're tensioning a padlock like this, we might use what we call bottom of the keyway tensioning with an L wrench. There's nothing wrong with that, I use it all the time. In fact, I'd say I probably do half and half top of the keyway and bottom of the keyway tensioning. Most people would consider this bottom of the keyway, although it's not really that accurate because if you turn the lock upside down, of course, it's now the top, but what people mean is away from the pins. Uh, top of the keyway, they normally mean pin side. That's the vernacular. So when people are talking top of the keyway, they normally mean pin side. What do I mean? Well, let me show you. Let's grab this tension tool here and pop that in the top. And you can see that I can apply tension now at the top of the keyway. Why would I want to do that? Well, the difference is, is that now I've opened up a lot more of the keyway to be able to put a pick inside and access the pins. That can be very important on some locks. Uh, in fact, um, I know some people that preferentially use top of the keyway tensioning for nearly every single lock they pick. So just to um, demonstrate again, look what happens when I put the bottom of the keyway tension tool in. You, you've only got a very small amount of keyway to put the pick in and you'd have to pick off this small ledge. That does mean that you can be prone to over setting pins in the lock. So the tool that I picked up was this um, SP14 and this is a 1.2 millimeter thick pry bar and they actually are a range of sizes. So these four are all identical in profile, but they go down from 1.2 millimeters, 1.8 and 0.6 millimeters. Just look at this, I'll pick this super thin one up and this thick one, here we go. You can see just quite how that is exactly half as thin as the other. Why would you want to do that? Well, um, a tight fit when you're using top of the keyway tensioning is actually usually quite an advantage. So if I had um, a lock like this one with a relatively thin keyway, I might want to choose something like this SP12 in one millimeter, and that would provide a an, an good tension on this lock. Um, the 0.8 might be too thin, the 0.12, or 1.2, sorry, um, actually could just be a little bit too thick. However, if I was to pick up something like this American lock here, I might want to use a 1.2 mil pry bar, and that would be a nice fit there. And that fits in very, very easily. and gives me full height of the keyway to pick at those pins. Now, you'll have noticed that there are two sides of these pry bars, the small, the short side and the long side. The short side, well, it's actually quite useful when the opening of the keyway is flat to the lock. So like this, you pop that in and you get adequate tension on here, nice grip. You'll see that there are small serrations down here that help grip on the inside of the lock, but they're not sharp, they're not too sharp, so they're not going to um, overly damage that lock. And there you go, provides nice tension. If I turned it round and used the long side, well, that can work, but I need to exercise a lot more control because it, it tends to move in a, in a, well, two axes, rotationally and uh, forwards and backwards, which actually isn't very useful but that is actually quite handy when you've got a keyway which is set deeper in the lock like this. The short side won't actually even reach in to provide adequate tension and is prone to slipping out, but the long side, of course, can reach down inside that lock, no problems. So it's about choosing the right variant for the job. So we talked about the kind of standard um, pry bars. Most people, when they think of pry bars, they think of um, a tool like this one. But then we have like a hybrid pry bar, and I believe that this is in 0.8 and 1.2, these two, this pair. So if I pick these up, you can see that one is um, 0.8 mils and one is 1.2 mils. Why have these? Well, actually, you get best of both worlds. You get a nice, um, short 
top of the keyway tension of this side and then a flat bar. Now a flat bar can be can be used uh, to tension um, a standard lock bottom of the keyway like this. It can also be used if you like and you can exercise the little uh, control top of the keyway in a lock like this. Although it's hard to control the depth. But I use those flat bars, the ones which don't have any uh, shaping or grooves on it, on things like dimple locks. What do I mean by dimple locks? Well, let's put this point 0.8 one down. I mean locks like this. And what you can do is you can tension like that. And that is incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, so these ones are really nice hybrids. Um, probably slightly more flexible than these, but in some circumstances, you probably want to have a longer side which is shaped and serrated like this. Uh, but these are really nice sort of hybrid, um, sort of very flexible in a lot of locks. Then you finally have a fully flat bar, and I believe this is, um, uh, I think this is a one mil or a point eight. I can't quite remember. Um, but either way, it's not so much the thickness that's the the thing; it's the double-ended flat bar. And again, there are just some circumstances where that is really, really useful, um, especially in locks where you need to do, I find, center tensioning. Um, so there are some dimple locks where you need to actually tension on the center of the lock. And I find that these fully flat bars are very good at allowing you to access pins top and bottom while center tensioning. And that's usually because you've got a row of pins here and a row of pins there. So there you go. That is the Multipick Elite top of the keyway pry bar set seven uh, tension tools and this actually comes in at a pretty good price you know you're getting multi-pick quality and finish here um, in a really nice case and I think the prices are at the point of making this video 29 euros and 63 cents or 25 pounds 55 which is only three pounds 65 per tool um, and that's not including the cost of the case, which is, like I said, a really nice case. Um, and that comes to about $32.66 in US dollars. Um, like I said, Multipick are a, a well-known, well-respected brand. And this is a really, really nice tension tool set. Um, it's rare to find this many top of the keyway tension tools in a kit made to this standard. Um, Everything's just really, really nice, well finished, well rounded. It's got the Multipick logo. Um, there's, there's no sort of stuttering on the laser cutting or anything. It's just really, really pleasant. Anyway, I hope you found that an interesting review and I'll see you all next time.